Looks like Xbox has finally figured it out. What's up, y'all? I'm Ray, and this is my channel, Xbox Ready. And you're probably <laughs> confused why there's like a furry little tail right here. This is my co-host. This is April the Cat. What's up, y'all? I'm Ray, and this is my channel, Xbox Ready, where, you guessed it, we talk Xbox stuff, what they're currently doing, what they did in the past, what they're going to do. After a couple of really confusing weeks, it's looking like Xbox is starting to gain a little bit more ground, and today we're going to talk about some exciting updates coming to your Xbox experience on console, on PC, and cloud, and how the month of May could change Xbox's standing in the industry forever. So for those of you who are not aware, we did get an April update that adds some new things on the Xbox PC app, some new things on console. Now, there are some things that are available to all Xbox users and some that are not. So let's go over the things that are available to everyone as of right now. On April 10th, Microsoft added game hubs for the Xbox app on PC. Now, when you click on a certain game in your library, you'll be able to see all sorts of stuff. You can track your progress on the achievements. You can see what your friends are doing and how they're engaging in the game. And apparently you can get the latest news from developers. I'm not sure. I'm looking at my Xbox PC app right now. I clicked on Chivalry, which is the last game I played. And I'm seeing my achievements. I'm seeing like the things I still need to unlock. My friends who were like in the last time they played all that. I see add-ons and then I see the stuff that's already been there, like the how long to beat stuff. I, I don't see like a news section for like the developers or anything like that. I see that I've played 491 hours of Shifuri 2. That's, I'm sure that's healthy. They're also bringing back this feature where if you use the game bar to capture a screenshot or a clip, it'll show up in this game hub along with all the other information. If you're an Xbox insider, you'll also be able to preview this sub navigation experience that they're rolling out that's under the what's happening tab. And okay, that's cool that they're adding in game game capture back into the Xbox app on PC, where it should have been this whole time. I can't believe I'm saying this because it wasn't perfect, but reading through this and seeing that they're adding in captures back into the Games Hub stuff, it makes me miss the Xbox console companion app that used to be on PC. It wasn't perfect, but it had the features that I needed all in one location rather than having to go and dig through captures through other apps. I don't know if this is a me problem, but I can't even bring up the uh, game bar with the Windows G if I want to take any captures while I'm playing anything on PC. I've tried to troubleshoot it. I don't know if this is a like a wide problem or if anyone else is having it, but overall, like my Xbox kind of features, the guide, the game bar, the app, it's like, mm, I'm, I'm missing a lot of stuff. So it's like, great, my captures will show up anytime I'm playing Chivalry in this little like games hub situation, but I'm kind of struggling to take those captures in the first place. Let's move on to the console stuff. On the Xbox Wire, it says starting today, if you're using Discord voice on your console, you'll now be able to hear soundboard audio from others in the channel or call. And if you don't want to hear these sounds, a mute button for soundboard audio can be found in the Discord voice options. Open the guide, go to options, mute, and soundboard. They're also throwing in some capture functionality on console as well. A couple of months ago, they made it to where you can automatically back up any clips or screenshots that you take on your console to OneDrive. And as part of this April update, they're adding in a feature that automatically lets you know, hey, you're running out of storage, so you might want to clear some space up if you want to keep capturing clips on Baldur's Gate 3, that'll get you banned. And they're also throwing in a feature where you can block whether users on your device can install or uninstall games and apps. So if multiple people use your Xbox console, whether it's your kids or your girlfriend, I don't know. I'm the only one that uses my Xbox, really, so I don't really have that problem. But if you're worried about, uh, I don't know, who was that guy whose girlfriend went and deleted all of his My Career players off of NBA 2K? Hey, relax, relax. Get out! Get out! If you want to avoid that from happening, you can now set a pin that you have to input before you do anything in terms of managing, uninstalling, installing games and apps. So we've talked about the updates coming to your Xbox experience on PC and console, but they're working on some exciting features for cloud gaming as well, but it's not available to everyone yet. It's just available for insiders. Tom Warren over at The Verge once again did a video that was very, very helpful in illustrating these changes, but basically they're adding social features to the cloud gaming dashboard and whatever you access it on a browser. So if you're on a computer, MacBook, iPhone, if you go to xbox.com slash play, it used to be it was just like the library of games and then you pick. But now if you press the guide button, a lot of the things that we're familiar with on our Xbox consoles will pop up, including party chat. Now, party chat on cloud gaming is something that you could previously do technically, but you had to be actively streaming and playing a game. Now you can go ahead and just chat with people while you're on the cloud gaming dashboard. No need to be playing anything. No need to pull up an external app like the Xbox 
WhatsApp on PC or on mobile. There is a messaging tab in this build as well, but as Tom Warren points out, it's empty, but that is gonna be coming soon, apparently. This is all small stuff, right? I know it's not gonna break the internet or anything, but now I'm like, okay, now you're cooking a little bit because it seemed like for a while y'all were neglecting Xbox Cloud Gaming because of all the Activision Blizzard craziness. But with little features like this, it makes it feel more like an Xbox without the Xbox console, which to my understanding was the whole goal in the first place. And while this is just a baby step, I am of the belief that one day cloud gaming could be something that is really, really cool, especially for people who can't afford to shell out money every generation, every couple of years for a brand new Xbox console to play the latest games. As a gamer who grew up with not a ton of money, I had to be a little bit more strategic about what I bought, use games, use consoles, things like that. The idea that you can have a console, an Xbox experience without the Xbox sounds really cool to me, but there's a long way a long way and a lot of work that they got to do in order to achieve that goal, to have some sort of parity between cloud gaming and a standard native console experience. Speaking of bringing things to the next level, Digital Foundry just did a breakdown about the Hellblade 2 preview that they were able to play. And they say what they saw, what they experienced is literally on another level and could potentially be the best showcase of Unreal Engine 5 once this game releases in May. Hellblade 2, through many other circumstances that Ninja Theory is not able to control, suddenly has a lot of pressure, a lot of expectations on them as a now first-party Xbox title. They didn't have that when they came out with Hellblade 1, Center of Sacrifice. Because back then, they were just an indie studio trying to do this like cool, experimental thing where they're trying to simulate what it's like to go through psychosis and give the players that experience. But after a couple of other first-party Xbox titles didn't perform as expected, a lot of people are looking at Hellblade 2 to really set the tone for Xbox, really kick off a positive string of releases for the rest of this generation and hopefully into the next. A lot of positive things have been said about the Hellblade 2 preview already, but a lot of people are also upset that this game is going to be locked at 30 FPS. Enter Digital Foundry. Here's some of the things that they said in their video. They say it's shaping up to be one of the most visually exciting games of the year, an excellent use and showcase of Unreal Engine 5. They say the facial animation animations feature lifelike eyes, pitch perfect teeth, and that the animation is generally just awesome. They seemed very impressed over the lumen lighting effects and also the particle density on the ground textures. And they also pointed out some moments where there was some artifacting, especially in the combat and some of the animations there. And it just, every time I watch a Digital Foundry video, I'm like, how do they do this, man? I swear to God, they got like the shot and gun or something. They're automatically able to pick up on like, oh, there's some artifacting there. Oh, there's some like uh, density, like something wrong with the mesh there. And like, I, I'm like, how, how? I know like all of these dudes wear glasses. Well, not all of them, I guess, but a lot of the big guys at Digital Foundry do. I'm like, how are your eyes so good and like so like attuned to graphics and performance that they can pick up on just the smallest, smallest details and imperfections? It's crazy. So yeah, this game is shaping up to be gorgeous. I also watched the Journey of the Mind stream that they did a couple of days ago, and it once again seems to be a very impactful and accurate representation of individuals with psychosis. The first game, Senna was Sacrifice, I thought it was really cool. It's one of those games that show you that, oh man, games can really be be so much more when you get the right people working on it. But while yes, it's gonna have like really groundbreaking audio graphics, like a really deep storyline, sure. Let's be on. let's just put the expectations out there, okay? It's, this game is not gonna be for everyone. That was certainly the case with the first game. IGN, when they were talking about in their preview, or it might have been GameSpot, I don't know, one of those guys, was like, oh, the combat is a lot more improved ver when you compare it to the first one. But when you watch it in the trailers and you watch it in these previews, it seems to be more or less the same, but with like a couple of extra powers and animations thrown in. This game is also confirmed to be eight hours long, so if you're looking for something to really sink your teeth into and lose yourself in for the next couple of months, this is not gonna be for you. And of course, a lot of people are very, very angry at 30 FPS. I kind of go back and forth about I don't know, the outrage over 30 FPS versus 60. There are some games where I'm like, I cannot do 30 FPS. Mostly like FPS games or like online competitive games. And then there are times when I do notice 30 FPS, but I don't really mind. A Plague Tale Requiem was one of them. Starfield, Starfield was okay. 
when I turn the motion blur off. I'm playing Dragon's Dogma 2 as well, and that is at 30 FPS, and I'm having a good time with it. And I, got, I think I gotta be honest with myself, y'all, because I know, you know, if 60 FPS, if it's a deal breaker for you, that's you, that's you. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything to each their own, right? But I gotta be real with myself, man. It's like, I didn't experience 60 FPS gaming until three years ago in 2021 when I bought my Series X and my PS5. Up until then, I was perfectly content with 30 FPS, man. I was happy. But on the other end, I do get it because the expectation at the beginning of this generation when Xbox was like, the Series X is the most powerful console ever, was like, oh yeah, we're gonna get 60 FPS, bare minimum, minimum. And that hasn't really been the case. But yeah, if this is shaping up to be the visual showcase that everyone is hyping up to be, this could be huge for Xbox. A long time, for a couple of years running now, they have been the butt of a lot of jokes, be it Craig the Brood or like people screenshotting a bunch of NPCs' faces and Starfield and they're looking absolutely whack. Crazy graphic and rendering things happening in Redfall. They have this reputation of being like, yeah, we're gonna deliver these awesome looking games and then falling a little short of that. And sure, they make up for it sometimes with games like like Hi-Fi Rush. But if Hellblade 2 ships and it's looking immaculate visually from a graphics perspective, they could finally turn the page on all of that. And then a couple of weeks later, if they show off a trailer for Gears of War 6, which is also an Unreal Engine 5, they can really establish themselves as a place that actually has really great looking games. But even though Hellblade 2 isn't gonna have a performance mode of any kind, it is going to be added in Fallout 4. Yes, that is right. The next gen update for this game for the Xbox Series X and S is finally arriving at the end of this month on April 25th. There's gonna be a performance mode, a quality mode, and best of all, it is going to be absolutely free. Thank you, Bethesda. Thank you, Xbox. We've been waiting on this for a minute now, and it's been delayed multiple times, and it's the perfect time now that the Fallout show is coming out on Amazon Prime, and people seem to really like it. They kind of word it a little bit tricky, though. They say experience up to 60 FPS and increase resolution up to, so it's not a lot. There's probably Probably gonna be another digital foundry video when this comes out comparing oh this is how it performs on xbox versus playstation 5 and then one of them is gonna be deemed to be better and then people are gonna be arguing about it over to on twitter and if you're still on last gen consoles like the xbox one or the ps4 don't worry you're still gonna get an update that features some stability things and like other patches but you're not gonna get that performance mode i'm sorry according to the announcement the team is bringing a selection of creation club content to the game at no extra cost Headlining this content is the Enclave Remnants questline, which also delivers the following goodies to all players. Anyways, guys, that's all the Xbox stuff I have to talk about today. Thanks so much for joining me for another edition of Xbox Ready, and I'll see you in the next video.